Okay, everybody, this is a main beer review. I can't freaking, I have no freaking idea. I'll figure it out afterwards. Uh, there was no main beer review last night. It, it just, something happened. Uh, frick, I don't want to talk about it. But anyway, uh, let's see. Tonight, uh, we got another beer. Uh, we're counting down to Labor Day. Um, just finished eating mashed potatoes. Uh, anybody who eats my mashed potatoes, um, they go, oh, Trippy, these are great. I mean, what do you, what's the, what, what do you do with them? I go, butter. And they'll say, no, what do you, you must put something special in them. I go, butter. And, and the story goes is I learned how to make mashed potatoes from TV. And there's a chef, and his name is, or was, he passed away a few years ago, Joel Robuchon. And he was famous for his mashed potatoes. Well, he actually is famous for everything he was famous for. But, uh, I mean, like, he's, like, got a gazillion number of freaking Michelin stars. He is the chef. And Robuchon uh, was surrounded by some fellow chefs. And, uh, you know, there was Wolfgang Puck, Thomas Keller, and, uh, I mean, maybe, I, I can't remember, uh, Anthony Bourdain, perhaps. And they asked, what's the secret to your mashed potatoes? And he goes, butter. And he, I, they go, no, 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 you must have something. And they go, butter. And I started laughing, and he was asked a third time, and he goes, butter. He puts an obscene amount of butter in his mashed potatoes. So I started doing it. And to give you an example, I ran over to Mainly Provisions today, got a couple of regular size potatoes, nothing big, nothing small. But for every potato I use, I only use two potatoes. It's just Jenny me. Um, I friggin', uh, I put in about six ounces of good butter. So, I mean, two potatoes, uh, was that, 12 ounces? I mean, uh, a little heavy cream. It, it, they, they are a freaking <laughs> obscene. And um, uh, you, can't, you can't beat it. It's butter. Anybody wants to make mashed potatoes, it's butter. Um, but anyway, enough with the mashed potatoes. Um, went back to the gym a few months ago. Uh, Johnny Winters, gym here in town, working out. Um, pandemic, it was kind of shut down and... I was working out in the barn here, and uh, old guys got to work out. We can't lose it. I tell you, I, if I don't work out, I get old man arms, old man chest. <laughs> you know, you got to work out. And um, I walked into the other room today, and, man, he had a punching bag. So he said, frig me. So he started punching it, and um, I said, oh, that hurts. Uh, so I ordered a pair of gloves. But I got to tell you the boxing story. Ginny um, uh, has, my wife has Parkinson's, and um, I'm her primary care person or whatever you call it and I'm, we're always thinking of different things to getting Jenny to exercise coordination whatever and I got her boxing is a big thing so a few years back I got her a set of boxing gloves and uh, we're going to try boxing and um, and I've got those uh, trainer pads that the trainer wears on their hands circular they're about that thick and uh, after the, 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 the boxer hits the pads so anyway I get them on Jenny and uh I gotta start boxing. I'm not boxing him, but hitting the bag. But anyway, I get him on Jenny, and I get her tied up, and I'm just about freaking putting the pads on my hands so I can start coaching her. And next thing you know, she hauls back and hits me right up against the side of the freaking head. And being the patient, loving, considerate primary care provider I am, I said to Jenny, "What the f are you freaking doing?" And she says, what? I said, you freaking hit me in the freaking head. She says, well, they're padded. I says, to protect your freaking hands, idiot. Not my head. What do you think? Boxers' faces are all smashed in. At least the bad boxers. But anyway, I got to get back on that bag because if anybody did any boxing or at least working with a bag, I mean, especially our age, uh, my age, uh, two, three minutes, man, I tell you what, it's a good workout. And, and Johnny was telling me um, his personal trainer side of business is doing really well. But, man, that freaking membership numbers are down. And uh, he's trying to figure out how to get those numbers back up because, man, you lost them during the pandemic. Everybody was worried. But, again, I'm over there working out. There's never nobody there. Uh, so, anyway, if you're worried, don't. Open the doors. Turn the freaking fans on. There's plenty of room. And get back to the friggin' gym, especially as old guys. <laughs> okay, tonight. Okay, enough talking. What did I talk about? Mashed potatoes and boxing. And Ginny, man, she...
astounded me. I mean, and she really didn't know that gloves are on those boxers' hands to protect their hands, not the face. Ugh, unbelievable. Anyway, tonight, um, never, um, never tried a beer from this brewery yet, yeah? so it's a good thing we're doing it. And it's Thresher's Brewing Company, and uh, it's in Searsmont. I didn't even know where Searsmont was. Um, um, and I live in Maine and been all over Maine, but it's just pretty much due west, not that far from Belfast. And it's in Searsmont, um, uh, Maine, and it's Thresher's Brewing Company. And I'm assuming that Thresher's is being named after a piece of farm equipment that separates grain from the stalks, um, not being named after uh, a shark that hunts in pairs. Um, they've got a picture of this one tool here. We've all got, I got one of these in my barn. I call this a scythe. Um, it cuts stalks, but it doesn't really do what a thresher does. Anyway, enough talk about farm equipment and freaking barn equipment. The name of the beer is Sea Smoke, and it's a porter, and let's give this baby a pop. Sea Smoke from Thresher's Brewing Company, and uh, let's pop it and see how it goes. Okay, here we go. Ready? Well, you know what? <laughs> Again, another freaking good one. Um, sea Smoke. I, I actually didn't blind pick this one. I like the name Sea Smoke. Come another month or so, two months ago, I know nobody wants to hear that, this, but uh, we live right on the Carabasset River here, and you can tell winter's coming when I wake up in the morning and there's smoke on the Carabasset. I mean, it's just there, and it's just beautiful. So anyway, uh, it's a porter. Um, it's definitely, let me taste this again. I'm getting the flavors they say that are supposed to be here. Yeah, they're saying caramel, uh, you know, dark coffee, chocolate. I'm getting a lot of chocolate, a lot of chocolate. And I guess this thing is brewed with um, black malts. They toast them and they brew them with black malts. So I'm expecting it to be dark. Porters are dark. Um, they're kind of like a cousin of stouts. I mean, anyway, uh, let me uh, taste this again. Let me get another sip. This is this is pretty good, you know. Man, I'm I'm really getting a taste for all these freaking beers. This is freaking getting nuts. I can't believe this main beer reviews is coming to an end. And um, man, but I'm not gonna stop drinking beer. Wow. Yeah, um, I tell you what, I can't believe it. Where the frig is the front of this can? What the frig? Oh, here it is. Okay. Uh, but anyway, um, hey, it's late. You can tell by the lights. Um, really good. Uh, crisp. Um, it's got a little aftertaste, but it's a chocolatey, chocolatey aftertaste. Uh, let's get a color check. Um, this is going to be d dark. I mean, with black malts, if it's anything but dark, I'll eat my shirt. Oh, baby, this is almost black. This is almost black. Burp one. Oh, yeah. And it's pouring beautifully. I love when they, what's that called, when the collar settles from the bottom? Uh, uptake or whatever. I, sh I should have, before I started this main beer reviews, I should have got a glossary of beer terms. But then again, the whole thing was based on main beer reviews. This guy who knows nothing about beers, like me, uh, reviewing beers and that was the whole purpose so i guess if i had all the freaking lingo down it's just a bunch of bullshit <laughs> here we go look at that collar hold up though huh and it's a beautiful dark chocolatey color look at that freaking collar baby oh baby man Man, this is, this is a good pub beer. This is a good, I mean, pub sandwich, 
you know, I mean, I tell you what, I, even like one of those, um, I mean, porters got popular in London back in early 1700s. We talked about that. Popular with the river and the uh, street porters. Um, you know those English breakfasts uh, with the bangers and the all the, I mean, I, I mean, they're so freaking big and so freaking heavy afterwards, you just want to go back to freaking bed. I could see drinking this with one of those big English breakfasts. Let me taste this and uh, get back to the can. Oh yeah, yeah. This, this as I've I've drank. Uh, got this upside down, Trippy. Yep, uh, or right side up. Uh, I drank porters before, and they're not a big favorite of mine. But I like this one. I tell you right now, this has got, again, not some of these companies that got all these flavors and you can't taste crap. Um, this one, you can taste the chocolate. I mean, it's dark. Uh, the caramel maybe is smoothing it out because it's not bitter at all. It's a beautiful beer. And it's um, Thresher's Brewing Company out of Searsmont. And uh, the name of it is Sea Smoke. You got to love it. Uh, a score? Man, I'm giving it 8.4. This is something that, um, again, I, I'll grab again. But out of like 80-some beers now, uh, I'd probably grab any of them if I see them again. Uh, this is a really, man, am I happy I started these main beer reviews. If for no other reason I entertained myself for two and a half friggin' months. Anyway, guys, uh, that's it. Uh, What else? Boxing, mashed potatoes, and good friggin' beer, guys. Uh, that's it for tonight. Um, salute. Please drive careful. It's raining and wet out there. And uh, who knows how many more days of rain we're going to get. And uh, thanks for watching. If you like porters, I cannot believe you're not going to like this beer right here. The Cousin of Stout, you're going to like it. Even if you're a stout drinker, a Guinness drinker try this. It's a little more bitter, but it's chocolatey, but it's just got a nice tang to it. Anyway, that's it, guys. Catch you later.